Could Zach Greinke be the perfect final piece to round out the Mets starting rotation? I'm going to discuss that on today's episode of Locked On Mets. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you amazing Mets fans who are listening to Locked On Mets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Mets your first listen every day. Locked On Mets is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. Now on today's show, I'll be talking about the prospect of the Mets signing free agent Zach Greinke in the first segment. Going to go through his stats this past year. What would he bring to the Mets rotation? In the second segment, I'll talk about if Grinke would even be interested in playing in a big market again with the New York Mets. What that looks like, is there even a chance this could happen? Then finally, in the last segment, I will make the case for Zach Grinke's role in the Mets. How much would it cost and why this could be the best solution to round out their starting rotation? Before we get to any of that, though, I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on Twitter at FinkelsteinRyan. You can also find some of my writing about the Mets at JustBaseball.com. So if we look at Zach Greinke's career, he has Hall of Fame credentials. I think that, in my opinion, he will one day be in Cooperstown. You're talking about a former Cy Young, a six-time All-Star, six-time Gold Glove winner, two-time Silver Slugger, two ERA titles. This is a pitcher with a 3-4-1 ERA and 219 games won at this point, which nowadays, I think later this week, I'm actually going to write an article about this, but the 200 win club is becoming what the 300 win club used to be because guys just aren't getting the same amount of wins nowadays. And currently when you come to active pitchers, it's Grinky, Verlander and Lester as the only pitchers over 200 wins, 219 by Grinky is second behind Verlander, who I believe is at 225. So really impressive career. We know that, but if you look at what he did this past season, He still was a quality starting pitcher, but nowhere near the frontline guy he's been throughout his career, even in 2019 when he was still an all-star. This was a diminished version of Zach Greinke. The strikeouts were way down. He pitched to a 4.16 ERA. The home runs were up. It was a 1.58 home run per nine, which was his highest mark since his rookie year. Zach Greinke was always known for keeping guys off the bases when it comes to low walk rates and low home run rates, keeping the ball in the yard. So that was a big change. But if you look at what he did last year, his left on base percentage of 75% shows you that he's still able to use that guile to pitch his way out of situations and still be a quality starting pitcher. And his walks per nine was under two again last year. And since he became a 30-year-old pitcher in 2014, since he got to that stage of his career where his stuff wasn't as overpowering. He has been great at keeping those walks down. 2016 was the only year since he turned 30 where Zach Greinke had a walk per nine over two at what was 2.3, I believe, uh, in his season with the Arizona Diamondbacks, his first year there where he had a 4.37 ERA. So that was the indicator of when Zach Greinke is not right is when he's walking a lot of batters. He did not do that last year. And that's how he was able to keep that ERA down, despite the fact that he got hit pretty hard. But even with that, one of the things that I like about Zach Greinke is he is going to keep your team in the game. He is a veteran starting pitcher that when he's you know in that, that lineup, he's in your scorecard, you know this is a Zach Greinke start, your team feels pretty good about their chance to win. Last year, his quality start percentage was 52%. So over half of his games, he was giving the Astros a quality start, which is at least six innings and giving up three earned runs or less. That right there ranked in the top 30 when it came to his quality start percentage. And you go through some of the other numbers that I like here. One of them is he gave up one run or less in 10 of his 29 starts. So a third of the time, he was well above average when he was on the mound. Then if you go to three earned runs or less, 20 of his 29 starts. So there was only nine stinkers in there where he gave up more than three runs and five of them, he gave up four runs. So only four terrible starts overall. He goes out there, 
He keeps you in the mix to try to win these games. And if the Mets have a good offense, Zach Greinke could win a lot of games for the Mets next year. And that's obviously what they're trying to build towards with the addition of Starling Marte, Marcana, Eduardo Escobar, and whoever else they add to that lineup. And by signing Grinky, that gives you more capital when it comes to not only spending in free agency because he's not going to break the bank too much to address that lineup, but also if you are going to make a couple trades this offseason, you can more focus in that direction, adding a bat as opposed to having to sign one. So it just offers some different opportunities for the New York Mets if they ultimately go this route. You go back to the innings pitch, as I mentioned. Uh, He's someone who is durable throughout his career. Last season, he pitched at least six innings in 16 of those 29 starts. He averaged 5.8 innings per start, which was 21st in baseball last year, 171 innings pitch. If you look at his career overall and you go back to his early days with the Royals when he became a full-time starting pitcher in 2008 after dealing with those mental health issues early on in his career, he has gone and had 200 inning seasons out of nine of those 13 full years since 2008, obviously removing the 2020 season. In 2016, that same year with the Diamondbacks where he struggled, he had an oblique strain that limited him to 26 starts. Other than that year, since 2008, he has made 28 or more starts every single season. So this is an opportunity to get a pitcher that is a facsimile of what Rich Hill was last year, but someone who has been more durable throughout their career who you can count on. And right now with this Mets rotation, what you're seeing is a lot of concerns when it comes to injuries, when it comes to age. This is, yes, another older veteran pitcher, but I think what he brings you is a higher floor in terms of innings pitch, durability, knowing he's going to give you a chance to win a lot of these starts. I have a, a better feeling about Zach Greinke's floor than I do in a Taiwan Walker or a Carlos Carrasco. Now, Carlos Carrasco and Taiwan Walker, I have much more confidence in their ceiling as opposed to a Zach Greinke, and that's why I think this signing could make a lot of sense. Now, this is not a perfect signing by any stretch, I and mean, we're talking about a fifth starter here, and there's a reason why he is now that at this stage of his career, because he just doesn't quite have that unhittable stuff anymore. And if you look at all the expected metrics when it comes to expected WOBA, expected ERA, expected batting average, expected slugging percentage, he ranks in the 38th percentile or worse in all of those metrics. His strikeout percentage was in the 11th percentile. His whiff percentage in the 18th percentile. He does not have swing and miss stuff anymore. You look at the put away percentage on his offerings, This was the first time in his career he didn't have a single pitch with a put-away percentage over 20%. Now, his fastball was the closest at 19.8, but that same fastball had a whiff percentage of 11.9, his worst mark with the pitch since his down year in 2016. Point being that, yes, he got some strikeouts with the fastball, but it was when he was really surprising hitters with it and putting them away. Overall, that fastball was not hard to hit. So, You look at those things, and yes, there is some room for concern here that he could go out next year with the Mets and get blown up a bunch. Here's the one thing I'll point to before we talk about whether Zach Greinke would even want to pitch for the Mets, and this is where I still think he brings value. His walk rate, again, excellent in the 92nd percentile. Barrel percentage in the 68th percentile. Average exit velocity in the 60th percentile. Hard hit percentage in the 74th percentile. Chase rate in the 58th percentile. Despite the diminished stuff, Zach Grinke puts himself in good situations with the fact that he throws strikes, he still has that intellect, he knows how to pitch to hitters, and he can limit the hard contact and get outs to get out of some of these situations that he puts himself into at this stage in his career. Because of that, I think this has the potential to be a really good sign for the New York Mets, but the question is, will Zach Grinke come to New York? Going to discuss that in just a minute. It's the new year, and that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure you include Built Bar in your plan. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar. It makes it easier to stick to your resolution because it tastes so good, you'll want to eat it. Unlike other protein bars, which can be chalky or waxy or taste like a chemical spill, Built Bar is covered in 100% chocolate. It is a great snack. There's so many different flavors to choose from, whether it's the coconut almond bar, peanut butter brownie, Raspberry, cookies and cream, salted caramel, mint brownie, and so many more. 
Built Bar is always coming out with new limited time flavors. So check built.com often to see what's new. So if you want to try Built Bar today, go to built.com, use the promo code LOCK15, and you're going to get 15% off your next order. Again, that's promo code LOCK15 or 15% off at built.com. So would Zach Grinke want to pitch with the New York Mets? Let's just talk about all the different factors here. The money side of it, I don't know how vital that is. Is Zach Greinke just going to go to the top bidder? Potentially, but he already did that with his last contract, signing that $206.5 million deal with the Arizona Diamondbacks, and he got a lot of deferred money in that deal. So over the next five years, Zach Greinke is getting $62.5 million. Whether he signs another contract or not, he's getting $12.5 million a year next year, no matter what. So for the next five years, I should say. So you look at that, and I do wonder if this is a time in his career where he's going to want to try to sign with a contender that he can try to win a World Series with. Got close with the Astros, didn't get the job done. So now maybe he's at that stage where he's going to ring chase a bit. Also, though, Zach Grinke could be thinking of this free agency as just, you know, he has a little more time left in his career. He wants to pitch somewhere where he can continue to learn. He's always about the analytics departments. That's one of the things he pointed to with Arizona, that he was going to be able to contribute to that analytics department. That was something that was enticing to him. So Maybe the Mets, when they talk with him, can pump up this new analytics department that they're pouring resources into and say, hey, we would love your mind on this. And maybe that's something that is attractive to Zach Greinke. We don't know exactly what he's thinking, but one of the things I was able to dig up is the no trade list he had on his last contract. Now, we don't know if he's definitely not going to sign with these teams, but let's just imagine that this no trade list holds up. Here are the teams that he did not want to get traded to when he signed his last contract. You have the Baltimore Orioles, the Boston Red Sox, the Cincinnati Reds, the Colorado Rockies, the Detroit Tigers, the Los Angeles Angels, the Los Angeles Dodgers, the Minnesota Twins, the New York Yankees, the Oakland Athletics, the Philadelphia Phillies, the San Diego Padres, the San Francisco Giants, the St. Louis Cardinals, and the Toronto Blue Jays. The Mets were not on that no trade list. So that's a good first sign, right? He does not already have this predisposition to not want to pitch for the Mets. Now, back in the early stage of the offseason, Bob Nightingale had reported that Zach Greinke will not be returning to the Astros most likely, but he would like to continue to pitch and in the National League. Now, part of that could be that Zach Greinke wants to hit again. That could be off the table no matter what if the Universal DH comes into place. But if we were to just take the no trade list and that report that he does not want to pitch in the American League, and if you just look at the teams that weren't on that no trade list, suddenly there is a clear aligning of roads that could lead Zach Greinke to the New York Mets because on that list, no NL West teams. Now, he was signing with an NL West team, the Arizona Diamondbacks, so I don't know if he has an aversion to pitching in the NL West where he spent so much of his career. Uh, I don't know why he wouldn't want to pitch for the Dodgers again or why he wouldn't want to pitch with the Giants or the Padres, but if you take that list for what it was, all right, maybe he doesn't want to go back and pitch in the NL West. If you take them off the table, you look at the NL East, every team in the NL East was excluded from that no trade list except for the Phillies. They were the only team on that list. Probably doesn't want to pitch in Citizens Bank Park, if you had to ask me. You go to the NL Central, the Reds and the Cardinals on that no trade list. Why would he not want to pitch for the Cardinals? I'm not quite sure. Cincinnati, a band box. Uh, but maybe he would want to go to Chicago. Maybe he would want to pitch in Pittsburgh. I don't know why with the way their team is, but hey, maybe he sees something in the farm system that I don't. <laughs> so one of his reasons for signing with the Diamondbacks was this farm system the Diamondbacks had didn't quite pan out, but who knows. Anyway, you go through the different teams, the Brewers, maybe, right? That's another team that wasn't on the no trade list. But if you really look at the teams we're talking about here, for eliminating the AL, we're eliminating the teams that are on the no trade list. It's the Cubs, the Pirates, the Brewers, the Mets, the Nationals, the Marlins, and the Braves. You can look at the Pirates, the Marlins, and the Nationals and say none of them are contending teams that would entice a, a Zach Greinke to sign with them. So that leaves you with the Cubs, the Brewers, the Mets, and the Braves. Well, the Brewers don't really need a starter either. They have a really good five-man rotation. If they're going to spend, it's probably to help that lineup. I don't see them necessarily reuniting with Zach Greinke. So that leaves you with the Cubs, the Braves, and the Mets. Now, the Cubs already added Marcus Stroman and Wade Miley. So if they're going to make more additions this offseason, I would imagine the offense has to be a focal point. So that could lead us 
to the Braves and the Mets as the two teams interested in Zach Greinke. It would not surprise me in the slightest. And the Braves have made a sign like this before with Charlie Morton. I mean, they could look at Zach Greinke. They have a lot of high upside arms in their rotation with Max Fried and hopefully Mike Soroka eventually comes back. They have a lot of different dynamic young pitchers that they could look towards, but having someone that can go out and give you 28 starts and 170 innings is valuable. And so that could leave us in a situation where the Braves need that and the Mets need that. Which one is willing to sign Zach Grinke? If you get to that point, I think Mets fans would suddenly be more interested in Zach Grinke because they'd want to keep him from the division rival. The question is, how much would that cost? And what would Zach Grinke's fit be on the New York Mets? Going to discuss that more in just a minute. Bet Online would like to wish you a happy new betting year as we continue our march to the playoffs and beyond. BetOnline remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year, new updated desktop and mobile website. So sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit just by using the promo code Locked On From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2022 season. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. BetOnline, where the game starts. All right, so let's start things off talking about the price tag. How much money will Zach Greinke make in free agency? According to Spotrack, his market value right now is just over $9 million on a one-year deal. That's what he's projected to make. If you look at some of the other free agent signs this offseason, that makes sense. Alex Cobb, a 34-year-old starter got a two-year, $20 million deal. James Paxson, a 33-year-old starter, got a $10 million deal. Rich Hill, on the low end of the market, got $5 million. You have Michael Waka and Jordan Lyles at $7 million. Corey Kluber at $8 million. Andrew Heaney at $8.5. So something in that ballpark between eight, 10, 11 makes a lot of sense. Now, the question is, how many teams are interested in Grinky? Where does that bidding go? If you are the Mets in this situation, you could probably wet Zach Grinke's whistle a little bit by throwing in a second year on this deal as a mutual option. So what that could look like is a two-year $18 million deal. So he gets $9 million in that first year. In the second year, there's a mutual option. Zach Grinke, if he has a great season, wants to be a free agent, he can just opt out. He could opt in to that $9 million contract. And if the Mets decline their end of the option, he could get a 2 or $3 million parting gift. So that way, Zach Greinke is guaranteed, you know, $11, $12 million for his one year with the Mets. Could be a two-year $18 million deal. Or if he pitches great, he can opt out, just hit free agency again if he's going to get a better contract next offseason. So in a lot of ways, to me, Zach Greinke is the perfect fit for this Mets team. He's going to give you innings, and that's my biggest concern right now is getting innings out of this rotation. I know that Max Scherzer is the best bet, right, to go out there and give you 30 starts and 200 innings. Jacob DeGrom, you hope he gives you that, but after this past year, that's a question mark. Carlos Carrasco, another veteran pitcher who just had an injury-plagued year. I think he's going to be great next year, but we just don't know yet. Taiwan Walker with that bad second half. Still the uncertainty of what David Peterson and Tyler McGill will be as major league starters. This is at least a somewhat proven commodity. You know that Zach Grink is going to come in. And yes, the the stuff's on the decline, but I think he's the type of pitcher with his intelligence that's going to be able to continue to get guys out, similar to Rich Hill last year. You don't even know how it's happening, but it's going to go out and, and he's going to find a way to get you through six innings. And that's what the Mets need right now. They need that anchor and, and not an anchor in in a Max Scherzer, Jacob DeGrom type, but like a Bartolo Colon for the 2015 Mets. Just that option that you know you can go out there and get you through the regular season, literally an innings eater. That's what I look at with Zach Greinke. And when you get to the playoffs, if everything breaks right, he's not going to be pitching for you much. And with the Astros this past year in their run, he didn't pitch much for the Astros as they made their push into the World Series. But when he did pitch, game four of the World Series, he went four scoreless. Also got a hit in that game. And he actually came back in game five as a pinch hitter, got another hit, becoming the first pitcher to record a pinch hit in the World Series since Jack Brentley back, or Bentley, excuse me, back in 1923. But you look at what Zach (laughs) Zach Brinke, what Zach Grinke can bring when it comes to intangibles. The 
you know, the, the experience, the analytical mind, there are a few pitchers in baseball that can still teach Jacob DeGrom anything. And Max Scherzer and Zach Greinke are those pitchers. And the ability to have both of them in this rotation teaching DeGrom, not even just how to get batters out, but more what their routine's been like. How have these guys been the, be- the most durable starters in baseball throughout their careers? How have they gotten to that point? Because these are the things that Jacob DeGrom needs to learn right now. If he's going to age well into his 30s, like Grinke and Scherzer have. And when you talk about what it's going to cost to acquire a pitcher like Luis Castillo on the trade market, and we've been throwing out names like Ronnie Mauricio or Jeff McNeil or all these different you know, high-quality assets that could be going out to acquire a cost-controlled starter, I wonder if that's worth it when you can just get Zach Grinke, sign him outright, He fits right into that window we've been talking about, signing players to short-term deals to try to win now. Yes, it's another risk in the fact that the Mets are going to be getting even older. And this is going to be one of, if not the oldest team in baseball. But if you're already going in that direction, if you're already leaning that way, why not go out and continue that and get someone in here that can be the most high-profile fifth starter in MLB history? I mean, maybe not, you know, I'm sure we can, we can dive through history and find some other examples of guys at the end of their careers. But I think Zach Greinke could still provide great value to the Mets. If you were to look at Clayton Kershaw is also on the market. The difference there is Clayton Kershaw concerns me a lot more with how much of the Mets even going to get him. You know, how many starts would he even make would he even be interested also. Whereas with Zach Greinke, I can make the argument as I just did for why the cost makes sense, what he's going to bring to the Mets, why he would like to pitch for the Mets. And so if all those things are true, I just think this is an option the Mets should seriously be considering. We haven't seen uh, a lot of reports linking the two sides, but once we get to the other side of the CBA and the Mets have to figure out who's going to fill out their rotation, if there's not a trade already lined up, if they don't have something in place, Zach Greinke is one of the top free agents I would look at because I think he brings a lot to the table. Anyway, that's going to be all for today's episode of Locked on Mets. As always, thank you for listening. Make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcasts. On tomorrow's show, I'll be joined by Javi Reyes, the host of Locked on Padres, for a crossover edition. You do not want to miss that. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. You're following me on Twitter, at Finkelstein Ryan, following the show, at Locked on Mets. Thank you for making Locked on Mets your first listen every day. Now for your second listen, check out Locked on Bets as we get into The NFL playoffs locked on bets is where you want to go for all your daily gambling needs. You can follow locked on bets wherever you get podcasts.